Hello and welcome to another episode of You Buy Traveling Tech Teacher for all your digital resources. Check out TravelingTechTeacher.com. Also brought to you by TheBullyExposed.com, a 501c3 nonprofit organization geared in helping survivors of bullying. So let them help you. All right. Welcome everyone to the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining the show. Real Young Blue is in the house. Real Young Blue is the creator of the song that you are listening to now. Good morning, Young Blue. So if you like the song, if you want something created, go DM him, hit him up. He'll create something for you that you will enjoy. We enjoy uh, the theme to our song a great deal, and we thank him a lot for doing it. All right. So... Topic today. We originally called it uh, buy sleep, sleep apnea, but after thinking about it for a while, I think that a better name for it will be good night sleep apnea. Good night sleep apnea works so much better. And SK is in the house. Thank you, SK, for joining the show. S smash that heart, guys. Smash that heart. And uh, of course, Share what we're talking about. Comment who's going to be the first to start the, uh, the, uh, I'm just so lost to words. I'm sorry. Who's going to be the first to start the Q&A? That's what I want to know. So whoever's going to start it, start her up. Um, but I guess the first question that we all want to know, right? You all want to know is what is sleep apnea? Uh, sleep apnea is when your breathing stops and starts when you sleep. Uh, most common common type uh, is called obstructive sleep apnea or OSA. So it's a very serious thing. You know, when I was talking to the doctors about this, one of the patients that I was talking to said that her doctor told her that every time you snore, you're actually... I can't remember if they said your heart actually stops or they said um, you stop breathing. When you're, when you're snoring, you're actually not breathing. I think that's what it is that they said. I'm sorry that I can't remember it. Uh, but I think that's what they said, that when you snore, you're actually not, not breathing or your heart stops. I can't remember the two. Let me also say, guys, I got my um, awesome... Bass Dash shirt on. This is like a UV40 shirt. I go in the beach. I go in the pool with this and I stay hours in the pool and I don't get burnt at all. And it comes to get the one with the hoodie. I think that's the best one. But I'm just telling you guys that I like this. I don't get paid to tell you that I like these shirts. I just figure, you know, I want to keep you guys from getting uh, any kind of sickness and cancer is that so this will help you with uh skin cancer i think i'm hoping it will i'm testing it out i haven't got sunburn wearing these things uv protected awesome thing to get now that i got the hood off i just want to show you how it looks with the hood on let me put on the crown okay a lot of my friends have sleep sleep apnea unfortunately um it's it's terrible but what I've been noticing from talking with doctors is that it's easy to get rid of. And it's a shame that people are not doing what they need to do to get rid of it. So now I talked to my doctor and we came up with six things that you can do to help if you have sleep apnea. As SK says, my dad has sleep apnea. And sometimes if he stops breathing at night, it wakes, it, it wakes up. He wakes up coughing, sorry. Oh, well, thank God that he wakes up, to be honest. Some people stop breathing and they don't continue breathing. Um, so I guess it's a good thing that he's waking up from it, even though he's waking up coughing. Uh, SK continues to say, uh, my friend's got sunburn once, and then after his sunburn went away, he had a mole and irregular edges, and it was melanoma. 
melanoma skin cancer. Oh, wow. So there you go, guys. Thank you for that, SK. So there you go. That's the important thing. Buy these, these UV uh, suits. When I, just to let you guys know, a little sidetrack real quick before we get into our countdown here. Uh, when I was a mailman, I used to buy these without the hood. Um, didn't have the hood uh, and never got burnt. Never and and people think, well, oh, aren't you hot? And I think, no, you're not because your your skin starts to sweat. It wets the material, and then the wind blows into the material and it cools you off. So I love it. That's all I'm gonna say. And again, they bass. You, you want to reach out to bass dot com. Uh, bass. I'm sorry, bass dash dot com. If you want to reach out to bass dash dot com for them and show them this video. I am not a spokesperson for them. Would I love to become one? Sure. I am not being paid to say this. This is, I just love these outfits. And somebody bought me three of them. I had one, not by Bass. I will admit, not by Bass Dash. And my other one was uh, an O'Neal. I had an O'Neal one. Great. You know, it, it was great all the time. Now someone bought me three of these and I love them. And that's all I got to say about it. Let's see. Barbie, Barbie Day, Day Yen, Day Yen. Thank you for joining the show. Where are you from, Bobby? And uh, SK starts the uh, Q&A. Thank you, SK. Smash that heart for SK, everyone, whether you're watching this live or recorded version. And SK says, I'm still hoping Pico will be back. It's going to be a while. It's not going to be anytime soon. All right. So let's get to the business, all right? The reason why we're here, to say good night to sleep apnea. So here's what our local doctor that tells me everything uh, has to say. He just re wants to be anonymous, and anonymous, excuse me. Uh, number six, use oral, oral, oral appliances. Now what are oral appliances? Like things that keep your jaw open, uh, I don't know the medical term for it. Let's see here. Two major categories of mandibular advices. I mean, mandibular advancement devices is what they call. And tongue stabling devices. Uh, these work by moving your lower jaw or tongue forward to, to decrease the obstruction in the back of the throat. Okay, so there you go. So... We all know what they are. Use those to help you deal with uh, with your sleep apnea. And um, SK says that I'm glad the crown is back. Yeah, me too, SK. I'm glad too. All right. So that's number six. Use oral appliances or as they're known, mandibular advice, mandibular advancement devices or tang, tongue stabilizing devices. That's a tongue twister right there. All right, number five, avoid alcohol and smoking. Okay, uh, lifestyle changes can improve your health and encouragement, says the doctor. Uh, encourage better sleep habits. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Encourage better sleep habits. Consider quitting smoking, limiting your alcohol intake, and reduce sleep apnea complications. Alcohol relaxes the throat muscles and... Con in con that control your breathing. Uh, this can lead to snoring and an in interrupted sleep cycle. It can also lead to in inflammation in your airways, blocking your 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 airflow. See, I never knew that uh, drinking would do that. And Martin's back. Hey, Martin, thank you uh, for joining the show. Uh, see, I, that's very interesting. See, I, that's what I love about this show because I learn things too, guys. I learn things also. Yes, it's eight. It's about 828 right now, guys, in beautiful, uh, sunny Italy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so look at that. Um, drinking uh, leads to inflammation of the airways. Never knew that. Wow. Okay, so number five, avoid alcohol and smoking. And guys... You know what we're talking about smoking, okay? Don't smoke. Don't smoke. Don't vape. Don't do 
any of that stuff. Don't smoke. You know, we you got to understand that smoking is not not healthy in any way. You know, now you're probably saying to me, hey, Rich, what about, you know, marijuana? You know, don't. I'm not against marijuana. I don't do any marijuana. I don't I don't do it. It's not for me. I don't do it. But um but there's many ways to enjoy it if you want to enjoy it. And don't but one of the ways not to do it is to inhale it through smoking, guys. I mean, just don't do it. As simple as that. Smoking's really bad. Uh SK says, uh yeah, smoking cigarettes are bad. Thank you, SK. Yes. Bad, bad, bad. Bad, bad, bad. I'll tell you guys a story at the end of this countdown. So number five, just to recap, avoid smoking and drinking or alcohol and smoking. Use a humidifier. So the doctor says that humidifiers are devices that add moisture in the air. Dry air can irritate the body and the respiratory system. Using humidifiers can open your airways, decrease um Decrease con con. What is that con? Oh, I don't know. We're we're skipping that word for now. It decreases our congestion. I'm sorry. Con- decreases congestion and encourages in- encourages uh, clearer breathing. All right. So um, for a benefit, you can add lavender, which is I what I do at night. Uh, peppermint or eucalyptus. Uh, to the humidifier. Uh, that's what I do. I don't have a humidifier. I have something a little different, but I do add lavender and eucalyptus in it when I go to sleep to help me sleep because I still have a little bit of PTSD from my bullying at the Postal Service. Uh, these three essential oils have known have known anti-inflammatory and soothing uh, benefits. So there you go, guys. Number four, use a humidifier. Uh, let's see. SK says I just sent it. You just sent what, SK? And I'll and I'll come to it after the uh, after the the countdown. What about uh, humidifiers, SK? What do you got to say about humidifiers? Ever used one? Ever tried it? Ever tried peppermint oil or anything like that to soothe your breathing? Or have your dad ever tried it? Being that he has. He has this, and please, SK, show this video to your dad, please. He's gonna, he can get something out of it. Okay, so number three, alter your your sleep position. I never knew that. Just altering your sleep position can uh, change things. Uh, let's see. Uh, although a small change altering your sleep position can reduce sleep apnea symptoms and improve your night's rest. Never knew that. He says a 2006 study found that more than half of obstructive sleep apnea cases are dependent on position. Wow. Okay, let's see. So, And he continues to say that the studies have shown sleeping on your back called the supine, the supine position can worsen uh, symptoms for some adults Sleeping on the side can help breathing return to normal. Okay, guys, you know what? I'm a person, I have to admit, that sleeps on my back uh, because um, usually I'm doing a yoga position that that requires me to be on my back, and I usually fall asleep that way, and I stay sleeping that way. So now I know I got to go on the side. Let's get, SK says it's, it's a video that will convince the live feed viewers to never smoke. Okay, okay, we're definitely gonna show that then. All right, what about your altering position? Do you know what position your dad sleeps on? Do you know what position you sleep on? Let me know. Number two, and this one is my favorite. And I know you guys are gonna say, oh, you rigged this, you rigged this. I did not rig this. This is what the doctor said, okay? Do yoga. Do yoga. I told you guys, yoga. Yoga is amazing, and I, you know, I and I'm not. I don't want to be a person that makes you think like for thousands of years I've been doing yoga. I haven't been doing yoga for a thousand years. I have really taken yoga serious 
for the last five years. That's uh, the last five years I took yoga seriously. Before then, yoga to me was like getting a massage. I probably got a massage two times a month. I mean, no, no, excuse me, no, no. Uh, one massage every two months. I probably got, and now I get a massage every. I try to get at least three, three, three times a three times a month now. Especially, especially because my insurance um, covers covers uh, up to a certain amount, so I pretty much don't pay for my um, massages. So now I get them, uh, uh, you know, once a week, sometimes three times a month. Uh, and yoga was that thing that if I got a massage, I might do some yoga. I, I might go to the gym. And do some yoga. It wasn't something that I did at home. I didn't know it that well. And then I met a, a great lady and we're doing videos with her. I want you guys to know this. We're doing videos with her. You can check it out on our YouTube channel. Nonfiction Filmmaker. Check it out. Uh, and we're doing videos with her. And um, she is the one that taught me to love, really embrace and love yoga. And I really thank her for that. Uh, her name is... Uh, E.C. Kelly, uh, that's her name, E.C. Kelly, and um, so I wasn't always a lover of uh, yoga, I want you guys to know that. So regular exercise can increase your energy level, strengthen your heart, and improve sleep apnea. Yoga can specifically improve your respir respiratory strength and encourage oxygen flow. And that is so true. That is so true. Just feed up the wall. You know, I, SK, I'm willing to think that if your dad did just did feed up the wall every so often, it's basically when you put your feet straight up the wall and you put your hips higher than your heart. I'm sure if he did that if, for 20 minutes before he went to bed, and just so you know, SK, on the YouTube video, uh, on our YouTube, uh, I should say, we have a uh, we have a twenty minute shavasana exercise. If your dad what, listened to that video and did his feet up the a wall, do maybe put a pillow on his back so he can raise his hips over his heart before he went to sleep. I am sure that that is all he would have to do, and that would help his sleep apnea because it worked for me. I mean, I don't know, your, your dad, or if you're listening to this and you're, and you're saying, well, I'm going to I'm gonna have my dad do that, and then six months later you come to me and say it didn't work, it may change. Uh, I'm just taking a guess because that makes me feel, if I feel, you know, if I worked like 12-hour day, I don't have, I just jumped out of the shower, I don't have time to do anything because I got to go and work another 12 hours, that's all I do is feed up the wall, put my hips over my heart, Listen to the, I listen to the video myself. Listen to the Shavasana video. Uh, and sometimes I don't even finish the video. It's a 20-minute video, and sometimes I don't even finish it. I'm knocked out. I wake up. My feet are uh, on, up on the wall. My phone is off. What I do is I get up, and I just roll into bed. Or sometimes I do the, I do the feet up the wall in my bed. So all I got to do is turn around, and I just go to sleep, and it helps me sleep. So let's see what the doctor has to say. Oh, we already read that. I'm sorry. We have to read this part. Uh, sleep apnea is associated with decreased oxygen saturation in your blood. Ah, okay. Uh, yoga can improve your oxygen levels through its various, various breathing exercises. As a result, yo yoga reduces the amount of, of, reduces the amount of sleep sleep interruptions you may experience. So there you go, right from the doctor's mouth, guys. Um, so I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what else you need. But yeah, I'll talk to him about it. Awesome, yeah. I'm going to send you the video I was talking about so that if you, you know, you should do it with your dad. Encourage your dad. I noticed that when I want someone to do something, I kind of do it with them, you know. Kind of do it with them. And that kind of encourages them to want to do it. 
And I am, I'm not guaranteeing it, but I'm willing to bet that if your dad did this 20 minutes, um, that his sleep lap, you know, would, would reduce. And then from there, he can start getting into more yoga and actually getting into doing yoga. Uh, and he can probably do it three times a week and will be good. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely would try that. So now the number one thing you can do to help uh, say good night to sleep apnea. But before we get to that, I want to remind you guys that Live Feed is brought to you by Traveling Tech Teacher for your digital resources. Check out TravelingTechTeacher.com. Also brought to you by TheBullyExposed.com. Um, a 501c3 nonprofit organization who wants to remind you to please go to YouTube, do a search for nonfiction film maker, smash that uh, subscribe button, smash that bell so that you're notified every time we do a show, or every time we put a video up there, and every time this show ends up there, this show will go up there within 72 hours, guys. So if you missed it, or if you prefer seeing it on YouTube, like some of my, my followers say, that's why we started putting the show on YouTube. You can just go over there, and boom, you're good to go. So, the number one uh, thing that will help you say good night to CPAP now, and it's maintain healthy weight. Now, before we go any further, I don't want to receive emails or DMs that I'm being insensitive to people who are a plus size. I'm not. Some of my best friends are plus size, like Christina Wells and Trini, the model from Canada. Uh, they are plus size. I know that's beautiful. If you want to be plus size, awesome. But if you're a person that your health is getting in the way, I mean, excuse me, yeah, your, 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 I'm sorry, your plus size is getting in the way of your health, you want to live, right? So it's time to really look and be serious and look at the weight, you know. So our doctor uh, uh, recommends people with sleep apnea to lose weight, um, obese, specifically Obesity specifically in the upper body can increase the risk of airway construction, uh, obstruction, excuse me, and narrow. Uh, Haven 136, thank you for joining the show. And narrow nasal passages. This obstruction can cause you to stop breathing suddenly or for lengths of time while sleeping. And if you don't get any oxygen, guys, the brain is not going to function properly. Okay, your your body is not going to function properly. Your heart's not going to function properly. So air is one of the most important things we need to bring into our bodies. So take a deep breath once in a while, guys, and really smell the roses, if you know what I'm saying. Doc, the doctor continues to say maintaining a healthy weight can keep your air, airways clear and reduce uh, sleep apnea uh, symptoms and... Uh, show and and that's what the doctor has to say so the number one thing we need to be doing is watching our weight guys that's very important um i'm going to tell you guys something right now you know i'm going to give you guys a cheat this is here you go a hack a cheat whatever when i was a kid we used to call them cheats uh now i think kids nowadays call them hacks what do you guys call them sk you know um I'm going to give you guys a hack. I honestly think that if you, I mean, it's not, you're not going to be the healthiest, but I think you can maintain a healthy body. I could be wrong. If you have an intake, a daily intake of ginger and turmeric, okay, um, lay off the soda, lay off the soda. Increase your intake of water. And this is this is the, the important part right here. If you increase your intake of ginger, and I mean fresh ginger, guys. I don't mean going down to your local sushi place. Ask them for a handful of that ginger that you get when you order sushi and eating that. No, I mean actual fresh ginger. Um, 
make a tea out of it, eat, chop it up real fine and put it in your salads or put it in your food somehow, some way, increase your intake of it. All right? And that's, that has uh, turmeric and ginger, which by the way, I, I, I love this. In Asia, they call turmeric yellow ginger. So let's call it, so ginger and yellow ginger has this property in it that um, it's a, it's an, um, oh God, I forgot the name, what's it called? A suppressant. It's an, it's a suppressant um, where you don't want to eat. And that's not the proper way to say it, and I apologize, guys, but you, um, I, I lost, I'm a loss for words for what it's called, but it's a suppressant. It suppresses your appetite. There you go. Sorry, guys. It suppresses your appetite. So if you um, increase the intake of these two gingers, or turmeric and ginger, depending on how you want to call it, you won't want to eat no more. And that's the reason that most of us, um, I believe, are overweight. Because we eat and something goes in our head, it doesn't turn off, and we keep eating and eating and eating. I'm guilty of it too. Okay, I'm not saying to you guys I'm better than you. Okay, I'm guilty of it too. I, I, my thing is, I told you guys this, I'll take a bag of chips, sit down to watch uh, a movie, or to even work on a film. And the next thing I know, I'm on the bottom of the, the bag of chips. There's no more chips left. And I ate the whole bag by myself. When you eat ginger and yellow ginger or turmeric, it shuts down that. You don't want to eat anymore. It tells your body, hey, you know, it tells your brain, hey, guys, we're done. No more food. And you don't want any more food. I told you guys that. I'm getting into fasting now because a friend of mine told me about fasting. Um, so I'm getting into fasting now. And so when I wake up in the morning, I might have orange juice with a little ginger or turmeric and some uh, cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper too, guys. Get yourself cayenne pepper. It also has the same properties. Because you know, if you saw our video about the benefits of um, the one with the hot pepper on the front of the the cover, it tells you that it helps suppress appetite. The 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 properties in hot peppers. So take those. Um, so it, it just it just helps you shut off. So I'm sure that SK, if you told your dad to increase his uh, fresh ginger, and I'm saying fresh ginger, guys. All right. Fresh ginger. It doesn't mean fresh is not you open the bottle or you open the can and you're eating it. That's not fresh. Okay, fresh is fresh and from the produce section, not just the store. So if you increase that ginger and turmeric, uh, you would want, first of all, you would want to eat healthier. I'm telling you guys, I found that out. I want to eat healthier now because your body is resetting the, the ginger and the turmeric is helping you reset your body. So that's why I say to people, go ahead, keep eating your, your whatever it is you want to eat. Whatever it is, your fried foods, your junk food, keep eating that. If you increase your intake of ginger, and this I'm not guaranteeing this, okay? I'm just saying it worked for me. If you increase your intake of ginger and turmeric, your body's going to want more fresher things. And eventually... The McDonald's, the Burger King, the whatever, fast food is not going to taste good anymore. And you're going to go to more different options. Thus, you're going to eat healthier. It, it worked for me now. Yeah, of course, somebody it might not work for. But you, this is the thing you got to do. You have to take it every day. Okay, maybe three times a day. You know, and... You have, yeah, that's it. You have to take it every day, at least three times a day. So just before you're about to eat a Big Mac or whatever you're about to eat, you go over there, take a nice little slice about maybe that big of ginger and turmeric or one or the other. Maybe swap each each time, eat that, and then eat your, your Big Mac. Trust me, you're not, you're not going to want it. 
You're not gonna want it. Trust me. All right, let's see. SK says a few things. Sorry, SK. SK says I weigh 170. I weigh 160. SK, just so you know, I'm six one. I'm five eight. Just so you, me and SK comparing it. Can you try to make a live feed two hours like that one time again? Hey, if you keep asking questions, I will stay on for two hours. So you gotta keep you gotta keep writing questions and writing questions as long as it doesn't make it boring. So let's see. So let's just recap real quick. Okay. So the six things that will help you say good night, sleep apnea, uh, is uh, six, use oral appliances or as they're known, mandibular advancement devices or tongue stabilizing devices. Okay. Avoid alcohol and smoking. You know what? Let's just make this a rule. Avoid all alcohol and smoking. Now, am I being hypocritical? No, I do. I do drink, okay? But I don't drink wild wild like some people do. So if you're a person that can't uh, just do little, little bit, then just avoid smoking a number, just avoid number five, avoid smoking and, and alcohol altogether. Use a humidifier, and if you can, get yourself some lavender oil, peppermint oil, a lip, um, uh, God, what is that called? Um, I can't believe that I forgot. Um, eucalyptus, sorry, and use some eucalyptus oil and put it in the humidifier. Uh, number three, alter your sleep position. Don't sleep on your back anymore, guys. Sleep on your side. Studies have shown that that's better. Okay, try yoga. You know, and all you have to do is go to YouTube, right? Do a search for nonfiction filmmaker. Look up Yoga Revolution. That's the name of our our uh, yoga routine, Yoga Revolution. Look that up. Subscribe. Hit the bell so you're notified every time a new video comes up. But try yoga. Do yoga. Do yoga. Don't try it. No, no. Let, you know, let's, I'm sorry I said try it. Do yoga. Period. Um, uh, and maintain healthy weight. And... I'm, and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again because I think it's important. You don't have to. Don't. I am suggesting don't go out to Weight Watchers. I'm sorry. It doesn't work. You know, you are, uh, in order to lose weight, you have to change your lifestyle. So you change your intake. Don't make an excuse. All you got to do, I'm telling you, this is to start you on losing weight. All you have to do is increase your intake of ginger and turmeric three times a day. Now, it's going to be hard because ginger is very hard to, if you've ever bit into ginger, uh, it's going to take you a while. So take small nibbles, small nibbles, small nibbles, you know, uh, take it. What I also do is I take, I'll take a, a peach, right guys, this is what I do. And I'll take a sliver of ginger or um, turmeric this size, about, well, you know, about the size of your thumb. You know, uh, up to your nail, probably, to start. And um, I'll take a bite of the ginger, take a bite of the pear. Take a bite of the ginger, take a bite of the pear. And I'll eat them, and that's what I do. Three times a day before the meal, not after the meal. Okay, because you probably would have eaten six Big Macs. You take it before, and you're going to see that it's going to suppress your appetite. And then eventually, if you keep doing it three times a day, three times a day, two times a day, you're going to bite into a Big Mac and you're going to go, this doesn't taste good. You know why? Because there are chemicals. This is what I was told. Okay. So if I'm wrong, this is what I was told. And this is how I feel it was explained to me. Okay. There are chemicals in uh, food, some foods. I'm not saying it's in Big Mac. So Big Mac, don't come after me. I'm saying in some foods... There are chemicals that make the food appear like they taste good. They're called flavor enhancers of some type. Okay? So, it, because of that, you feel it tastes better than an apple. And that's why you, that's why if I put an apple in front of you and a Big Mac in front of you, if you know what Big Mac tastes like, you're going to go for that. Okay? And I don't mean to pick on McDonald's. So, you know, you're going to, uh, let's just say fast food. So you're going to go for the fast food because you know what it tastes like. 
But when to me, when you eat the right foods, that's dandelion leaves, uh, kale, turmeric, ginger, these types of foods, when you eat them, it resets. That's the word my dietitian used. It resets your palate. So now you have a palate that's re reset, right? Now when you go to eat the fast food, guess what? It doesn't taste so good. You're like, whoa, wait a minute. And that's what helped me give up meat, if you're wondering how. Because I, I you know, it's really funny because, and if it ever shows up on my Facebook, I'll share it with you guys. I wrote, when, I, when my wife, my wife was the first one to become vegan, I said, I like this vegan thing. I like, because I like the way I felt after a meal. I wasn't bloated. I wasn't heavy. And uh, Red, Red Beard, thank you for joining the show. Uh, where are you from? Smash that heart. Whether you're watching this live or recorded, guys. So she was the first one to become vegan. And then I turned around and said, well, you know, I love this vegan thing. But I know that certain meats I can never give up. There was certain meats. You know, ground beef for a hamburger? Pfft, that's garbage meat, just so you guys know. That's garbage. And so that was easy to get rid of. Uh, but, you know, a nice London brawl, a nice skirt, a nice skirt, that was hard to get rid of, you know. And what happened is when I started to eat right, my palate got reset. And when it got reset, when I ate those meats, they weren't good anymore. They weren't good to me. And that's how uh, you can maintain your health. Everyone thinks that, oh man, weight loss is this big, amazing thing that, you know, it's like rocket science. It's not. It's not. Sorry. Just when you go shopping, don't buy the crap. Don't, I don't buy chips anymore. If I buy a bag of chips, guys, it's a small bag of chips and it's for me to eat while I'm there. I don't go and buy, oh, let me buy three bags of chips and eat them at home. I don't do that anymore because I know that that's, that's my danger. Uh, and I can get myself in a lot of trouble with that. And SK says, I just resent the video about, about to quit smoking again because it wouldn't send the first time. Okay. Cool. Let me see what else. Uh, can you try it? Oh, no, we read that already. Can you play the video that that I will that I will convince the live feed to quit smoking? All right. I can't play it all, SK. You know that. Uh, when it comes to playing other people's videos, I could only play a small portion of it and then commentate on it. So let's take a look at it. And we will play a small part, and I, I will kind of decide when to bail out of it. It's only 30 seconds long. Okay. All right, so let's see what SK has for us. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. That'll do it. And let me give props to... For free help, visit cdc.gov slash tips. Okay, cdc.gov uh, slash tips if you want more help on that. In that video, let me give a shout out to the CDC that created that 30-second commercial. And um, yeah, that, that that's enough to do it. And let me tell you guys a story. Um, I, I told the story before, but I'll tell it again. Um, so when I was a kid, I don't know, must have been six years old, I would watch my uncle smoke, you know, smoke and, and, and it was very hypocritical because my uncles will say, I don't want you ever smoking. Don't you ever smoke? You know, it was really funny. I used to make a joke when I was a kid because I used to say, they would come to me and say, Hey, don't you ever, ever smoke. I don't want you smoking. If I see you with a cigarette in your hand. I'm going to slap it out of your hand. Don't you ever smoke. Now go down to the bodega and get me a pack of cigarettes. It's like, you know, literally that's how it would be with my uncles. And me and my cousin, uh, I will keep him nameless. We made a pack. And we told my uncles, 
we made a pact that we will never smoke. That was, I would say that was at six years old that I made that pact with my cousin. We said we would never smoke, never. My cousin um, ended up being a smoker, you know, and me, I stood strong to it and, and didn't, be, uh, become a, didn't become a smoker. I didn't. I mean, I don't, I mean, now don't get me wrong. Have I ever smoked a cigarette? Sure. You know, you're 15 years old, you're kind of getting, you know, I don't want to say I, I got sucked in by peer pressure, but all kids get sucked in by peer pressure. So let's be honest. So I got sucked in by peer pressure. Sure. Hey, here, man, smoke this cigarette. Yeah. And I smoked and then, and I was like, what the hell? What the hell is so good about this? You know? What the hell is so good about this? I felt like crap. I was always constantly spitting because my saliva just felt so weird. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and SK puts up cdc.gov slash tips. Thank you. Um, thank you, SK. So I didn't do it. I didn't do it, and I'm glad. You know, now my dad, you guys know, died of cancer. Um... And I don't know if, in fact, the smoking, because he was, he was no smoker. My dad was a very unique guy. My dad never smoked at home, and I thank God for that, because I know friends whose dad smoked at home, and they have respiratory problems. He never smoked at home, uh, but he would smoke when he was with his friends. He smoked when he was at work. And I think it was because he smells the other... Uh, the other guy smoking so he's like okay let me you know he gives him the itch to want to smoke unfortunately and i don't know if the cancer that he died from was linked to his smoking but um i wish that he didn't smoke i wish that he didn't smoke when he was with his friends and it's really funny because my dad would has was and just so you know sk my dad was a bus driver for the mta he he rode the uh what was it? I forget the number of the bus, but I think it's the BQ, BQ fifty one. I think it is the one that that goes from the Bronx, uh, to Queens to Manhattan. It, it drops you off right in front of a uh, Radio City Music Hall. I I believe, if I remember, it's been so long since I've taken a bus in in New York. So please bear with me, guys. And he drove the Q. 76 and I believe that went up and down Francis Lewis Boulevard in in the Queens that that was my dad one of my dad's I mean he had many routes but those were the routes that I remember I remember as a kid if you want to hear some memories uh one of the it was right the BQ 51 if that's the number that would stop right in front of our house I believe it was the East Chester Apartments uh on the Cross Bronx Expressway it gets, I believe it gets off the car spines and it would pick us up. It would be right on the corner of our house in, in uh, the Bronx. And I used to get on. My dad, of course, wouldn't let me pay. I don't know if he's going to get in trouble for that now. I mean, he's retired. So he would take, and I would take that bus and I would ride with him. And then sometimes I would get off. When I was older, I got off in Manhattan, would chill around Manhattan uh, with friends and then get back on that bus, and uh, then it would drop me off at home when I lived in the Bronx. When we moved out to Long Island, I would go in with him into the depot, and then we would ride back to Long Island together. So those, those are the kind of things that I would do with my dad. Uh, and those are the memories I have of my dad driving the buses around. But um. You know, sleep, sleep apnea, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say, but it's very, very easy to take care of. I'm sorry. And I know I'm, no, I'm, I know I'm going to get a lot of people with, you know, my, my dad has it or my mom has it or I have it. And it's very hard to get rid of. If you, if you do the six things that I tell you, it's very easy. And, you know, the same thing goes for, I don't know which diabetes it is. Okay, so I'm not saying all diabetes I don't know if it's type 2, I don't know if it's type whatever, I don't know the different types, but I know that there's one type of diabetes that is easy to get rid of. Just watch your intake of sugar, 
Watch your way. Pretty much the same things that you saw here. Watch your intake of certain things and 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 you'll get rid of it. And how I know that is because my my um friend, I have a friend whose father has this type of diabetes. Uh, is it, it SK says it's type one? Okay. If you say it's type one, I I will I will say yes, uh, but I don't know for sure. So if if SK or I are wrong, please don't be offended. Because some di I have friends that were born with diabetes, uh, so that diabetes you just can't get rid of by by doing something, watching your weight. You just have to do what the doctor tells you to to keep it under control. But this particular one that I'm talking about, and we believe it is type one diabetes. Uh, my friend came to stay with me and uh, we told him, with his father, I should say, excuse me, with his father, and we told him, we do not allow meat in our house. So you will not have meat in this house. If you want to go out and go to a restaurant and eat a big steak, fine, don't bring it into the house. If you bring it into the house, it's going to be fed to the dog because the dog is the only meat eater in this house because he's the only proper meat eater. Our bodies, believe it or not, guys, I hate to tell you this, is not is not designed to eat meat. Our teeth are not designed to eat meat. So anyway, so he stood with us. He, he was willing to go and not eat meat. And he ate the same things we ate. Um, and guess what? The doctor took him off of most of his medications for uh, his diabetes. Took him off most of his medication. Okay? So, you, you, you can't get rid of it. You can't get rid of it. Sleep apnea and this are two. And I'm sorry, I'm not here to hurt your feelings. I'm here to, I always want to give you the truth. The truth as I know it. Okay, I might be, you might find out, oh, look, Rich was wrong, but I'm giving you the truth as I know, as it worked for me. And that's the great thing. Either these things have worked for me, or I've seen them work for my own eyes. I didn't read them somewhere or seen them somewhere. I seen the change from with my own eyes. And I'm always going to give you that. Uh, let's see here. SK says, what year? What year? Did your dad die? Um, wow, 98 probably? I don't know. That's so weird. Yeah, I don't know. But 98, I would, if I had to give a date offhand, I would say 98. Um, so SK, you're going to keep it interesting? You're going to keep asking questions? What's going on? You're going to end the show? or It's all up to you. So... Let me also do this. Um, let me show you guys. I don't know if I'll be able to show, if you guys will be able to see this. Let's see. All right. So, yeah, I'm going to see if I can show you guys here. So, that one right there that you see, that is the Shavasana. The name of it is the best let me see. Yes, the best of Shavas Shavasama compilation volume two. And it's a volume one. Either one of those, listening to those uh, when you sleep will help you with your sleep apnea, guys, over time. So you just keep doing it. Uh, yeah, I'll keep it. I'll keep it interesting. So, so SK says he's going to keep it interesting. And he says, no, it's it's type 2. Okay, so again, guys, whether it's type 1, type 2, whatever type it is, it's easy to get rid of it, not manage it. I love that. How Your doctor wants to keep you managing it because he's making money off of you coming back into the doctor. Get rid of it. Same thing with the sleep apnea. Doctors are making money off of you left and right. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. We did, did uh, sleep apnea is not something that we should be having in our lives. If we, like, again, I'm going back to when 
we were hunters, right? When we hunted our own meals, when we this and that, you know, even if even if it's the 1700s, when we had to go out, if we wanted meat, we had to go out into the forest or, or if we wanted anything, we had to go out and find it, right? Uh, we weren't big then. And the reason why we weren't big is because we had to work for our own food. Just like a, you'll never, ever, 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 you know, and I'm not trying, again, I'm not trying to be insensitive. If this sounds insensitive, I'm going to say I'm sorry now. I'm not trying to be insensitive. But you'll never see a big dog. You will never see a big dog. Like you see now, you can walk through the street and see a big dog. Because he doesn't have to hunt for his food. But you get a dog out, out in the real world, he's going to have to hunt for his food. And he's going to keep his weight down. Uh, let's see. Uh, did you have any other interactions with Glenn Norton after the argument? Uh, yes, we did have a, a few during my process when the United States Postal Service was trying to fire me. We did have a few. Unfortunately, the postal service—I mean the—and this is, shows you how crooked that and corrupt that they are. They knew that I had a problem with Glenn. I told them that I had a problem with Glenn. I told them I did not want to be represented by their organization. I wanted to be represented by a lawyer, and they still uh, gave me Glenn Norton on my team to help me fight for to get my job back. And of course, I didn't get my job back. And that's one of the reasons, because he was on it. Uh, so we had, an, uh, we didn't have an argument, but he, he, he definitely tried to be aggressive towards me like he was that day. And I let him know that that was not acceptable. Uh, next question. Keep them coming, SK. Uh, what did, or did you stay away from him after that? Uh, no, I didn't stay away from him. I didn't. I, I, I just live. You know, like I always tell you guys, I'm. I just went through my every day. If he was there, he was there. If he wasn't there, he wasn't there. Uh, if I needed to talk to him, I wasn't gonna say, "Well, let me not talk to him because he might, he might scream and yell at me again." Because that's what he wants. That's what a bully wants in the workplace. Remember that, guys. Now that you brought this up, SK. A bully wants you to shy away. Okay? A bully wants you to not um, question their authority, if they have authority, or question their existence. Okay? Because they have no answer for it. If, if you question a bully's existence or what he's doing or the way he's behaving, he doesn't have an answer for it. So the best thing to do is when you do have an answer is to act like the way Glenn Norton did um, and be so, so obnoxious that next time I say, well, I really want to talk to him about something, I start thinking, but I'm afraid it might end up the same way it ended up last time. Who the hell cares if it ends up the same way it ends up? If you want, record it, you know, or if you want, go and talk to him with multitude of witnesses, not and witnesses that are on your side, okay? Because like I said before, there was a bunch of people in that room, but they were all on his side. I was the only one in that room that was looking out for Richard. Richard was the only guy looking out for Richard. Everyone else couldn't give a crap what happened. So if you want to confront a bully in the workplace or in your school playground, bring your buddies. You know, don't make it look like it's a gang, your gang against their gang. Just bring your buddies so that if he says, well, he hit me first, then you have your buddy saying, no, he didn't. Or that's not going to happen in the workplace. But what will happen in the workplace is they'll say things like, he he did this. You know, they'll make up lies. He, You know, I can remember one time I had an argument. I'll tell you this story. I had an argument with, well, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say argument. Because argument would mean I, I argues with him. But the customer wanted his mail. You know, sometimes I'll uh, give you, draw you guys a picture. Sometimes I open up all the mailboxes in an apartment complex and people come up and think, well, it's open, so why can't you get me my mail? Because it slows me down. And I got, 
you know, only 30 minutes to be here or an hour to be here. And if I'm giving out mail, then that's going to, it's going to take me longer. So I don't give out mail when I'm doing my job as a postal worker, but some other carriers do. So sometimes it, uh, an employee will come up and say, hey, can you give me my mail? I mean, not an employee, I'm sorry. A customer will say, can you give me my mail? And I say, no, I, I'm, I'm working here. And they get mad because while the other guy gets it for me, well, go ask the other guy then. I don't know what to tell you. And they get mad at that. So one time I had a customer that was very upset about that. And I said, sorry, sir. You know, as I was working, I explained it to him. I got an hour to be here. Then I got to go somewhere else. And if I'm an hour and a half here, then that means at the other place where I go, if I have an hour there, that means now I only have 30 minutes there. So what do I do? Now I'm behind. So I can't give you your mail. And some of them will accept that. Some of them don't. Uh, but anyway, this one guy didn't accept it. He started cursing and screaming at me. And I was like, okay, bye. You know, and 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 then he called the my supervisor thinking he was going to get me in trouble. And he told him that I threw something at him. That I was so outraged. Uh just from him asking a simple question. That's the other thing too. See, this, this is how bullies are. You know, his version of it was that he simply asked a question if I, if I can get his mail and that I blew up over that question and I threw um, something at him. That's what's his story. So see how, now my story, and, and I know, you you know, be fair, you don't, you guys don't know if my story is true or his story is true. You know, you guys don't know. But, I'm telling you that what I'm telling you went down. And it doesn't matter who's lying in this case. I'm just trying to show you how bullies are. So his, again, I'm going to repeat it. His um, occurrence of the event was that he kindly asked me if I can get the mail. And I blew up and got upset and threw stuff at him. And that's how, that's how bullies are. You know, that's how they are. They're always the victim. I, I'm the victim here. Not you, I'm the victim, you know, so listen to me. And that's how narcissistic people are too. Uh, let's see what we got here from, um, so is that how you lost your job from the postal service is getting, is getting fired? Well, uh, originally I got fired. I sued and I, and I got the firing removed from my record. So now it says, if you look up my record, that I voluntarily quit. Um, and it's a shame because that's how they get rid of good workers. And that's why the Postal Service is so horrible. You know, the good workers either quit or they get, or they get pushed out. I call it a push out. They push out like they did to me or they just don't care as well. They become the the carrier that doesn't care either because no one else around them cares. Um, and SK does a quote from the video that we're talking about. Stay on your side, Glenn. That's right. Stay on your side. Uh, and SK has another question. Good job, SK. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Did they believe the customer or you? They believed me. Um, luckily, at that time, with the postal service, I was working with um, a supervisor that I knew I was a hard worker. You know, you know all the. If you talk to line supervisors in the United States Postal Service, they're gonna tell you many different stories about me. If you talk to a supervisor that's honest and that knows, they're gonna tell you he's a hard worker. He always was there for me. You know, there would be times when I would come back from my from doing my route, okay? I'd come back from doing my route, and the supervisors would say, I have, you know, 15 minutes of mail, 30 minutes of mail. Sometimes there was one that there was a whole route. I came back from my route, and there was a whole route untouched. That's eight hours. It could be more, but let's just say it's eight hours. Eight hours worth of work. And he told me, take it out and I'll have a bunch of people out there to help you. And he did. He did bring a bunch of people. So thank, thanks to him. 
and we went out and we uh, we knocked out this mail, but I'm the one that started it. I started the route, and then all these other people started coming, and I started giving them pieces of the route, and I don't know, maybe three hours, we knocked out an eight-hour route, and it was a bunch of bunch of guys and girls, um, but, and and those supervisors, no, I, I never, never said no to a supervisor to to work overtime unless it was family-oriented. You know, that was it. But if it wasn't, if I had nothing to do that day. I was just going home. Um, if my kids weren't having a recital or something of that nature. And that, that was very rare in between that that my kids were having recitals or anything like that. Um, so I always worked the overtime. And every supervisor that knows me from the postal service, they know, yeah, he always, he never said no. He never said no. I never said no to the good supervisors that didn't play games. And the ones that played games, I even never said no to them unless they were being abusive. Now, a supervisor came up to me and they would do this. You're going to take this mail or I'm going to fire you. I'm going to be like, whatever. You know, whatever. Don't talk like that. You know, and that's all this... That's all the supervisors have that they're gonna fire you, and unfortunately, they can. They do. They do have the power to create this illusion. We're gonna call it that you're a bad supervisor and get you removed, like they did to me. Uh, do you think Glenn was going to hit you during the argument? No, I never had that feeling. That he was going to hit me. I was very concerned. I was afraid for my life. Let, let's get that straight. I was afraid for my life because if it did come down to that, I know that all those people there would cover up and 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 lie for him. So for that, I was very fearful. But like, was I afraid he was going to hit me at that point? No, because... I know that he was weak. He's just a weak person that's just all about mouth and he's nothing else. You know, he's nothing, nothing else. He's not powerful other than the power that he has as the president of the union. That's the only power he has. He's a very weak person and I know that. My main concern was that he would make up something and then all those other people would be on him. Was he an old white man? Uh, I'm going to choose not to answer that question, um, SK. I'm sorry. Um, because answering that, I think some people would turn that into I'm a racist. So I, I'm not going to answer that question. But you, you just upset. You looked them up. You can see. You can go see uh, what he is, but uh, I don't want to answer that because I know how some people are. What's the next question? Keep it going. Um, but that's how that's how bullies are, guys. You have to understand that they are the ones that are being hurt. They 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 might have hurt you verbally. They might have hurt you physically. They might have took something away from you. Uh, but they are always saying that they are the ones that are hurt. I'm hurt. I'm the I'm the victim here. And that's how they and you have to learn as a person that's dealing with bullies how to change that. And I think that if we're worried as victims of bullying or survivors of bullying what the people are saying to us instead of learning how to overcome the lies that they're saying, then that's when we get trapped into uh, something dangerous. So always keep ahead of your bully. Like, you know, your bully's going to make up lies. Just think. Think of how that doesn't make sense. You know, like when when uh, the su supervisor, Monica, the African-American supervisor, said, you said you didn't want to file a grievance. Okay, doesn't matter what I said yesterday. Doesn't matter what I said three days ago. It's what I'm saying now. So make the adjustment. It's the same thing with police officers, right? A police officer, and I believe it's a lie, 
but a police officer might be taking a, a, a person of color and arresting them, right? And the person of color turns around. It does, does, this happens very rarely. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen, but it happens very rarely. Might spit at them, might swing at them, you know, might call them a bad word, right? And then the cop turns around and brings them into the office and they got broken ribs. Well, how did they get broken ribs? Well, he spit at me. Well, he he uh, called me a name, you know, or, you know, he took a swing at me. Let me tell you right now, you're a police officer. And I know police officers are going to say, would you do that? No, I wouldn't do it. And that's why I'm not a police officer, because I know I wouldn't do it. But if I was a police officer, yes, I would do it. If someone swings at me or spits at me, I'm going to arrest them and I'm going to add insulting an officer with spit if that's if that's the if that's the um, the charge. I'm going to add that onto the charge, you know, resisting arrest, whatever the charge may be. Uh, I'm going to add that and that's it. But I'm not going to break their ribs because they spit in my face or I'm not going to break their ribs because maybe they called me uh, a derogatory term or that they took a swing at me. They took a swing at me, I, they missed, I got them, I got them down, I arrest them. But what some cops do is, okay, you took a swing at me, now I'm gonna break your ribs. Or you spit in my face, now I'm gonna break your ribs. And those are the cops that need to leave. And and that's what's happening. You So you gotta learn to, to overcome that. That's what we have to learn. And I know it's tough, and like I said, I know cops are going to say, well, you're not a cop, so you don't know. No, I'm not a cop, so I don't know. And that's a, that's a bullshit excuse, okay? It's like when athletes tell uh, reporters that they don't know what it's like to be an athlete because you've never been an athlete. You're just a reporter. It's bullshit. Wrong is wrong. Right is right. And do, you know, again, someone swings at you, you, you deal with it right there. You get out of the swing, or if you got punched in the face... You got punched in the face. You should do him properly, because unfortunately he's got he has rights too. Or fortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, you arrest him without any kind of harm, and you bring him in. That's it. Because you can tell it's BS. Because you, I've seen tons and tons of white people swing at white cops, and they come. They nothing happens to them. Absolutely nothing happens to them. So I know it's just BS. These cops know how to seduce somebody who's trying to harm them and bring them in without any injury to them. They know how to do it. It's just when certain people or women, even sometimes with women, they that goes out the door because I can treat you any way I want because you swung at me and that's not right. That's not. It's not right to swing at a police officer. Never do it. But it's not right for the police officer to say, now that you swung or spit in my face, I can do whatever I want to you. There was a a story with a New York City cop. I told you guys this. The cop broke, I mean, the the perpetrator broke into the cop's home. He didn't know it was a cop's home, but he broke into the cop's home. When the cops uh, came to stop him because the wife knew what to do. She got on the phone. She called real quick. Cops were at her house because they protect their own, right? So, oh, this is what's-his-name's house. Let's get there quick. Drop everything else that you're doing. Drop the donuts. Drop the coffee. We're going to so-and-so's house because there's a perp in in the house. Well, they went over there quick. One of the cops decides to call um, the, the guy's wife. I mean, the guy's husband and says, hey, we just had somebody break into your house. He said, Hold, keep him there. They kept him there. The guy drove from, I don't I don't know how far it is, to be fair. It could have been five minutes. It could have been 35 minutes. But he drove all the way back to his house, pulled the perpetrator out of the vehicle, brought him into his house, and beat the mess out of him. And then the police justified that. You know, there's no justification for that. Well, he broke into my house, so I beat the crap out of him. That's not, that cop, this is why it's so corrupt. And this is why we got to do something with cops. If I was at the end of that, you know, I'm like, okay, why is this guy all bloodied up? Well, he resisted. Okay. 
You know, you know the cop is eventually going to say, well, he broke into my house, so I wanted to teach him a lesson. Boom. We need to, we need to give police officers the avenue to say that, to say that, and then give them the avenue to protect them. So this cop who was part of that, I mean, he wasn't part of it, excuse me. He was there when it happened. He spoke up and said, this is what happened. This is why we know this story happened. He spoke up, said, this is what happened. And then he started to get, and I know it was in New York City because he started to get New York, dead New York City rats in his locker room. And eventually they did to him, they, they did to him what they did to me. They just push and push and push and push. The the union is 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 in in it. The unions. Uh, I mean, I'm just taking an assumption here. I mean, he told me they just push and push and push until finally he was out. That's what the cop told me himself, and he's going to remain unanimous, uh, anonymous because he doesn't want to tell the story until this is the right time. But this is what he told me in a secret, off the record. Uh, interview that I had with him over the phone and he said they just kept pushing and pushing so I'm going to assume okay I'm assuming here so I don't want to say anything about a union that might be good but the police union just looked the other way until he finally lost his job now if he had stood quiet he would still be a police officer today but he spoke up and now he's not a police officer and this is the problem with police we need to give them a platform where they can say, I heard this happen, or I saw this happen. I saw cop number one and cop number two bring the perp into the home and beat him up simply because he broke into that house. So he knows never to break into that house again. It's the house of a cop. That's not right. Whether you, and you know, and it's a shame because. You know other cops. This is the, the thing that gets me the most, is you know other police officers were like, what happened to this guy? Or oh, he resisted. And they don't say, really? He's got broken ribs. He's got broken arms. He's got, he's got blood all over his face. This is not resisting. I'm sorry. I can resist all day long. And it shouldn't have one single mark on my face. I'm sorry. I shouldn't. And I know cops are going to be out there. You don't know what it's like to be a cop. Whatever. I don't want to hear it. There's four of you, five of you, and there's one of me. If you cannot, uh, if you cannot arrest me without not without not bringing major scrapes, of course, yeah, my knees gonna be scraped. Everything, certain things are gonna be scraped. Fine, but there shouldn't be broken bones. There shouldn't be broken ribs. They shouldn't be. Uh, my face shouldn't be so bad that my mom cannot even recognize me, and that's what what the problem is. Uh, with the police officer. Brand028, thank you for joining the show. Smash that heart whether you're watching this live or recorded. It doesn't matter. Show some love. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, SK continues to say, what is president of the postal union? What is? Mm, I don't know how to answer that. Either. It's, you know, in every union, you need a guy, just like the United States government, right? You need a person that's going to run things. And then you got other people under that secretary and, and stuff like that that help run different parts of it. That's what the post, postal union, uh, that's what um, the president does. And there's presidents on almost every union. I don't think I've ever seen a union that didn't have a president. Uh, was he nice to you, the First time you met him? Oh, yeah, he was great to me the first time we met him. Um, when I met him, he taught me that, this is the funny thing, uh, he taught me that it doesn't matter whether the member is a dues-paying member, whether he pays his dues and his dues are up, up to date or they're not. We have to represent them as union stewards all the same. But at some point in my career as a postal carrier, I decided to get rid of the union dues, it wasn't worth it, put that money towards a, getting a real lawyer. And uh, and he said to, he specifically said to me, you, we don't have to, uh, we don't have to represent you because you're not a dues paying member. But he must have forgot that when I first started as a union rep there, him himself told me, 
you have to represent people whether whether they use dues paying members or not. So that goes to show you the kind of a rotten person he is. Um, what else here? Do, do you remember or not? Yes, I do remember uh, to answer the other question. Uh, didn't that happen in Georgia? Says SK. No, that it might have happened. That I wouldn't be surprised if there's a story like that in Georgia. I'm sure there's. You can. You can. I'm sure you can go through every police station in all 50 states across America, and you'll find a story where a, a good cop said, "This is this is what's going on," and the system and all the bad cops around them allow him to be pushed out. Uh, and that's a shame. Uh, let's see. Wait, let's say... Uh, I don't think the cop did the right thing by beating up the perp. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear you say that, SK. No, he didn't. Sorry. They, first of all, that first cop should have never called him and said, this guy came, broke into your house. That's the one thing. He should have just... And he should have never waited. He should have just bought bought the perp in. And that's the thing about it. Like I said, you know, let's just say, for the sake of argument, that the cop was 30 minutes away. Let's just say. So you made an arrest. Let's keep things simple. You made an arrest at 8 o'clock. You know, or, or let's keep it. Let's, let's do the whole timeline. You get a call by dispatch at 7.55 that there was a, there's a perp breaking into a house. You know that that's your friend's house. So you say, I'm going to take the call. I'm right around the corner. I'll be there in five minutes. Boom. You drive down there. Eight o'clock. It's now eight. You grab the, you grab, get into the house. You grab the guy. You make an arrest. You put him into the vehicle. 8.05. Let's just say. Okay, now you make a call at 8.05. Hey, Billy Bob, guess what, Billy Bob? I got a guy here that uh, was in your house and broke into your house. Okay, hold him right there. I'll be right there. Yeah, he comes on over and it's General Lee. They, uh, he gets there, like I said, 30 minutes, so that 8.35. He beats him up for about 15 minutes. That's what, uh, 8.55, give or take. 8.55, he's in the police vehicle and you guys are going to, to the thing. So what's that hour? Why is that? That's what I want to know. Now he comes to you beaten up, broken ribs. I think he had a broken arm or broken leg too. His face was all bloody according to the police officer's police officer said, that said this. Um, and nobody wants to know that extra hour or 45 or 50 minutes. Nobody wants to know. 8, 50, 8 o'clock, I said he was in the vehicle. He should, if the precinct is 10 minutes away, let's just say by 8.10, he, sh he should have been in the vehicle. But, but by the time they do their thing, by 8.10, by 9.10, he's in the vehicle. Where's all that time? And, that, and that's the problem with the police department. Nobody wants to know what happened to that time. What happened? What happened that time? You know, you can't tell me that all of this happened from resisting. And that's the thing that we have to do. We have to start making rules for cops that if anybody breaks a rib, you're going to be held accountable in some way. You know, maybe you're not going to lose your job, but maybe a week off of off of work to think about it. You have to bring the people in without breaking their ribs, period. And if you want to wait till you have enough backup, you know, you have three cops, four cops there to do it, then that's what you do. But you don't try to, you know, it's just BS. You know, that's the way I look at it. It's just BS. And I'm sure that... If they looked at that guy's chest, he would have kick marks or punch marks or uh, whatever the, the stick that they carry, the, the baton that they carry, whatever. I'm sure he would have marks on his body that match that. But yet nobody did a did a um, some kind of uh, investigation. And that's what we need to get. We need to stop. 
Uh, do you support defunding the police? Well, first of all, let me say this. It's not defunding the police. I don't know who started that, uh, but it's not defunding. We They just want to take certain allocation of, of funds and put it towards maybe bringing in people that are psychologists. So now psychologists will go out with the police officers. And, you know, I think that's the way they should do it. Because, unfortunately, these police officers can't notice, can't tell when they have someone that might be going through some kind of schizophrenia or something or, or mental health issues. So it's not defund the police. Uh, it's more allocate funds to other ways to help um, police and uh, and that's what we need to do. And again, I know a police officer is going to watch this and say, you're not a police officer. But I say this to that police officer. That's just a cop out. Okay. That's just a cop out. Because I can tell you right now. Okay. I, I was talking with this with a friend the other day. If a postal carrier doesn't, it gets into an argument with someone on his route, Right. Well, unfortunately, what happens if you got an asshole police, I mean, if you got an asshole carrier, is he'll take your mail and throw it back into the mail system. So it has to come back around to you. So that uh, delays you getting your mail, and that's delaying the mail. I've never done that. I have had uh, people call me N-word. I've had people call me um, the S-word. You guys know what the S-word is? When it comes to Hispanic people, call me the S word. I've had people call me the F word. Okay, when I didn't give them their mail or when I delivered bad news for them. And never once did I held, held, held their mail in that way. Now, yes, I've held their mail. We are allowed to hold mail. If we feel we're in danger and there's someone that every time we go to them out to the mail, they're harassing us, we... We fill out a form and we hold their mail and we tell the police officer, I mean, not the police officer, we tell um, our supervisor what's going on and sometimes they bring out the inspectors uh, to the situation. That particular situation that I was talking about where the person said he, I threw something at him, the inspectors were called. The inspectors didn't believe a word that they said. Um, but, so we are allowed to hold their mail. We're just not allowed to like, hold it like for indef indefinite or we're not allowed to hold it and not tell a supervisor you can't do that you hold it you fill out the paper proper work and you, and you give it to a supervisor I know guys that would be getting pissed off at suit at customers and they go and they put their their mail uh, right back into the system so it has to go come around to them uh, because they got mad at them for whatever reason, you know, maybe the person said, hey, can can I get my check, please? Because um, that's what the big issue is, the checks, you know, check government checks. Can I get my check? And we say, sorry, you know, we're, we're trying to put out all the mail. We only have a certain amount of time to do it so we can't be distracted. Sorry. And we're working while we're telling them this. And we continue working and the person will continue, continue. Finally, if it's too black, uh, to African American mail carriers, they might say, "Oh, you, you know, you N word," or if it's a woman, they might call them a B I B I T C H, whatever. And I know carriers that was like, "Oh, really? I'm a B I T C H, or really, uh, I'm an N word, or 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 I'm this, or I'm that, or whatever it is you called me." They wrap up their mail and they and they put it back into the system, and now they have to wait for it, and that's not cool. You know, if you if you're going to do, don't get me wrong, I've done that. I've had people, when the, all those times that those people called me the F word and the N word and the S word, I definitely held their mail, don't get me wrong. But I filed the paper, proper paperwork. But some people just, you know, even sometimes some people will, will come and ask questions and, and the carrier will get pissed off. Uh, it's something now sometimes the people do something mean but like again you don't use your power like that it's like I tell you with the cops that's why I say if I was a cop I'll be able to do that 
You know, that's using your power too much. You have your power, have your power to hold your mail. So if you don't want your hell mail, your mail held, please walk away from the conversation now. Now the person says, and work, and I got, I got no other choice. But I'm not going to abuse my power. And that's what cops do if they... If someone spits at you, okay, you just threatened me. So you go through the proper channels. You arrest me. You put on the paperwork that I spit on you. I go into, I have my day in court, and I I I do my my thing, and and that's how the proper way to do it. Not to okay, you spit at me. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna beat the mess out of you. And I know I've had friends also that didn't spit on cops, and they get arrested for whatever you know. For something bogus. They get arrested for something bogus. And then when they go up to see the judge, they go, okay, you're here because you assaulted an officer. Oh, insulted an officer? Yeah, you spit on the officer. No, I did not spit on the officer. And I had a friend that was going to go to... Uh, not a friend. We became friends. I found them on the internet and we became friends, I should say. Who was going to go to jail for a very long time. And what happened was, thank God he's smart. He, he put out all over the internet... If anybody was on the corner of this and this at this time, uh, on this date, blah, 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 and you recorded uh, um, something that occurred with the cops or you, or you witnessed it and they are able to come into court and to witness uh, what you saw, please get in touch with me. And he got in touch with his lawyer and a guy who was actually filming the whole occurrence and saw that then my friend did not spit on him because the video was that clear and that good and he he was saved. But the sad part about it is that nothing ever happened to that cop. And now that's abuse of your power. You know you're a cop. You walk into a courtroom and you lie in a courtroom. Most likely, if there's a jury, if there's a, uh, there's a judge, he's most likely going to believe you because you are the cop, right? You are held to a higher standard. And that's why it's so important for cops not to lie. And, but they still do. And people in power, period. You are held to a higher standard. That doesn't mean that you get away with more. That means you act the way you should. And I think I showed you guys a video, a family guy, of uh, them saying that exact thing. You're held to a higher power. That means you act a certain way, not that you're able to get away with more. And unfortunately, that's what happens. Uh, let's see, SK says he agrees. Uh, let's see, SK also says, I can't remember, did you say there was someone who tried to rob you in Italy? No, you know, I feel very, very safe in Italy. I do. Um, in fact, you guys know, I've been to a lot of places all over the world. And pretty much the places I've been to, I feel very safe. I guess I go into only the good neighborhoods of places. Uh, but I feel very, very safe in a lot of the places I went to. I remember one time when I was in Tokyo, we got, we got turned around one time when I was in Tokyo. And we started heading to our hotel and we were going in the wrong direction. And we walked for hours in the wrong direction. Then we realized, oh God, we're going the wrong way. So we turned around. And we, by the time we got back to our hotel, it was late. Super, super late. Now, yes, there were drunk people outside. But I never felt threatened like like those people were going to start a fight with us or, or rob us or any, anything like that. And that's how I feel in Italy, at least this part that I'm at. I hear there are some bad parts of Italy. Uh, and hopefully, I have no plan on going there, these parts. And um, so, but no, I've never, I, I never felt like I was going to be robbed in Italy. Never. Uh, let's see. Or ML. What's ML? I don't know. Or like ML. I don't know what ML means. Let me know. Why did you move to Italy? Oh, okay. That's a very good question. I'm probably sure you know the answer because you remember when I announced that we were moving to Italy uh, probably a year ago. It probably was a year ago today. Okay. My wife works for the Department of Defense. Uh, and um, 
So her job sometimes takes her to different countries. So uh, there was an opening in Italy and she took it. So that's why I'm in Italy, just so you guys know. And before that, for those of you that don't know, I lived on the island of Guam, beautiful island, miss it uh, in Asia. I uh, loved it so much. But yeah, okay. So what else you got here, SK? It's the SK and Richard show. Let's see, you want to find out what, uh, let's see what Joe, I mean, what Evan's doing. Evan Roberts, let's see. Tune into his show. I think his show is going on right now, right, SK? While you think of some questions to ask. We have a commercial, so we're not going to give any any, any free advertisement away to any company. So we'll wait for it, for the Evan Roberts show to come back on. Uh, let's see. So let's see. So even you probably move to another country if she's has to move again. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yes, that's uh, if. But, you know, some of you might not know my wife is Italian-American. Okay, so she really likes it here. Uh, so we'll probably be here for a, a while. We probably will not be moved. Um, um, so we'll be here for a while. The other thing is, there's so much to see here, right? We can go to France, Germany. You know, it's endless. You know, uh, Norway. What else? Spain. You know, there's so many places to see it, so we want to see all those places. So that's another reason why we probably will be here for a while. Uh, I sent a question about Nano. Okay, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to read this one privately. Let's see, Nano. All right. Um, okay, so I'm going to answer this question. I know it's unfair to all the viewers because they don't know what was asked, but I'm going to answer it like this. You really need to stop uh, talking with that guy. You need to report him. You need to take a picture of that and um, send it to uh, Instagram. You need to take a picture of that, send it to me, and I'll floated all around my followers or our followers I should say I'm sorry I don't like to say my followers because it's the bully exposed it's not it's not really mine uh, so the bully exposed followers and every time we do that we definitely shut down uh, these bullies so send it to me uh, what he sent and I will send it to Instagram and hopefully Instagram will do something about it and not say that this doesn't meet the the the, uh, the the definition of bullying they just you know Instagram pisses me off so much with that I gotta tell you guys uh, do you think it's it's to the point where I should call the police um I mean you could always do that SK you could, you could always do that I'm not gonna tell you no you shouldn't do that you sh in fact being that you brought it up yes I think you should do that but this guy is in another country and I just feel like the police will say it's out of our jurisdiction you know um, I feel he's just a person that just talks but you never know nowadays you know you you never know when people say I, I, you know, I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna track you down like he said um, you never know so Maybe, yeah, I'm not going to tell you not to call the police, but call them. But what you definitely need to do is block him. Block him for sure. Uh, because I don't text him back. He still makes different accounts and and threatens me. Right. I understand that. Um, but then you block that new account and just do that. Because he used to come on our accounts too all the time. And I would not answer him back. I would not say anything. What I would just do is take a screenshot of it, send it to to uh, Instagram, send it to our followers, and get that one closed. And then the next day or the next week, 
he would have a new name and I would do the same thing. Um, and he got bored of it and he doesn't, he doesn't uh, bother us anymore because he knows he's not going to get what he, what he wants. I mean, you, you say you don't text him, that's great, but something's happening that he knows that he's getting to you and that's why you're always constantly getting uh, emails from him. But if you follow what I'm saying, like don't even talk about him on the show. Maybe that's what it is. You don't text him. You don't communicate with him at all. But he watches the show under a different name. So because he watches the show, he knows that you're always talking about him. So he he continues to, to uh, harass you. So if you don't pay any attention to him, don't talk about him on the show and let him. And all of a sudden, you're not doing anything with him. You're not answering him, you're not saying anything, you're not talking about him on the show, he's going to grow bored and he's going to go to that guy who is writing back, you shouldn't say that, or, you know, writing back the same thing, I'm going to kill your parents or whatever. They love this. They love, they, he, he, he probably loves the fact that he's watching our show and he knows that you and I are not talking about him. Now he's like, oh, great, great. I got them talking about me. And that builds them up. That's why you have to just not say anything. Not say anything at all. You know? And I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Believe me. Believe me. I'm from New York. I want to tell some of these idiots how, just how stupid they are. But you know what I've learned? That saying nothing is more powerful than telling them how stupid they are. Because they already know how stupid they are. All right, let's see. As K says, Instagram won't do anything about bullies. It's fucking makes, oops, I should have not cursed. It makes me so angry. Yeah, they don't. It's a shame. I, I There was a girl from India who was being bullied. Um, and her and her friend both have texts. They sent me the text of the things that he said. I sent it to Instagram and I told him, I want an answer. I want an answer back from you. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to put up a YouTube video that says I got no answer back. I'd rather have an answer back for you. And their answer back was that this doesn't, uh, this is not, this is not qualify as bullying. I'm like, oh my God, the guy is saying rude sexual things to the girl. And not only is it bullying, it's sexual harassment. And Instagram is either too busy or has too much uh, going on or has robots answering their their emails and doesn't don't under, they don't understand that what the person said is vulgar and disgusting to say the things that he said to an underage girl or well, she was underage you I believe she was 15 or 13 anywhere from 13 to 15 uh, these four girls were. And from what I get from the account, it was a guy and nothing, nothing. What are you going to do? You know, that's why, I, that's why I tell you guys all the time. We as survivors of bullying, we can't worry about schools. We can't worry about the workplace. We can't worry about any of that. We got to learn to protect ourselves, right? We got to learn to protect ourselves. That's by getting lawyers if you want to sue. It's by learning to defend yourself if uh, the bully is, is physically bullying you or if someone is sexually harassing you and you think it might turn into like a rape situation. Learn to protect yourself. Carry the proper stuff that you need to carry. I don't know what that might be for you. But that's why we have to learn to just take care of our own because no one's going to take care of us but ourselves. No one cares about SK more than SK. You know, maybe his parents, but, you know, and the same thing with with me. No one cares more about me than me, right? So I have to learn to do the things that I need to do. Let's see if we have any sound from the Evan Roberts show.
Win us a goal tonight, buddy. I love you, Kev. Oh, now we can second, second round. Of All right, so there you go. They're talking about Kev. Who, who are they talking about again? Uh, Kev, who's, is he, he's playing for the, uh, I think they're talking about the Olympics. And he's a Nick player, I believe, that's going, uh, that's playing for the, the uh, Olympic team. Uh, refresh my memory here, SK. Uh, SK asked, was it a brain tumor when it came to my dad's passing away? Yes, it was a brain tumor, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, Kevin Durant, okay. Or oh, James Hardy and Kevin Durant who played for the Brooklyn Nets. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it's if you guys are wondering, I, I think I had this question from someone. Have you been watching the Olympics? Unfortunately, I've been just watching the Italian Olympics. And I've seen an a, a Italian team take on the U.S. So I have seen, you know, Americans in the Olympics. But mostly it's been, it's been Italian uh, Olympics. Um, so. Uh, all right. So. One more question. Uh, one more question, SK, and I thank you so much for uh, for doing this. And uh, so we're on a hundred minutes now. So how many how many hours is that? So a hundred minutes. That's like an hour and forty. An hour and forty. Okay, let's see. Yankees won again last night. Thank you for the update, SK. So they are 59 and 49, which is 10 games over 500, which is where this is their season best. And Danielle DeBella, thank you for joining the show. Where are you from, Danielle DeBella? That's such a beautiful name. Smash that heart, everyone, for Danielle DeBella, whether you're watching this live or record it. Show us and show Bella some love. Welcome, Bella. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see. I don't think the U.S. is the best country over every ca category, but I do think it's the best based on freedoms in some ways, says SK. Thank you for that. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a, I said this before on the show, and I'm going to say it again. When... America was run by the king. I think it was King George, right? And I think that was 1700s, right? When we were ruled by England. You could not say um, the king is doing a horrible job. You could not carry a gun because the king was afraid you were using on him. So we didn't have the right to bear arms. And that's why the right to bear arms is so important in America, but I think that some knucklehead Americans have gotten it, got it too far. You know, carry a gun to protect yourself, carry certain rifles to protect yourself, and that's it. We don't need, uh, we don't need some of the things that people are out there. And now, when it comes to um, freedom of speech, Unfortunately, some people have changed have changed that too and have ruined that. Freedom of speech means that you can tell the king or the president or the mayor or the anyone that they're doing a horrible job. You can say that. Freedom of speech is not saying that all people of one color are horrible or all people of one color should be killed or all people of one color aren't Americans. That's not what freedom of speech is. So learning, and I, I honestly think that they should pass a law. You know, what, what it is, is they're afraid if they pass a law like this, then other freedoms will go away. No, no, I think that the Ameri America is a great country and we can distinguish between one freedom and another. And I think they should make it against the law to say words like the N word, the F word, um uh you know the s word the m word those should be against the law those are not freedom of speech and if you use those you should get in trouble i i told you this a thousand times guys i'm i'm a sports lover right i mean not when i'm in italy not when i'm in europe but when i'm in the states i was a 
sports lover, and I think that if you go into Madison Square Garden and you say the N word, the M word, the F word to someone, enough people hear you, you should go into a trial. You get into that trial, paid by you, of course. You get in, you go into that trial. If it's founded that you did say the word, and I'm, you know, they got you on tape saying the word, the N word, the whatever word, or 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 saying you you know saying things that start a hate crime, then you should be banned from that from Master Square God, never to step foot into it again. And if you do it on a train, if you do it on a bus, if you do it here, if you do it there, if you do it anywhere, you should be banned from wherever you did that. You're in a museum and you say that, then you should be banned for life, banned from that museum. And if you do that, people will say, oh, wow, that word is bad, period. Uh, let's see. Uh, SK says, like in North Korea, you can't talk bad about Jim Jong Yong or or you'll be killed. That's right. And there's other places as well where you can't say anything negative about him. And let's see, there's no reason anyone needs an AR-15. Yep, there you go. That's one of the guns I was talking about. I sent you a video of someone I recorded on the New York subway. All right. Let's take a look at this video before we close shop here. I don't know what's wrong with my phone. Eh? People send me stuff and they tell me they send me stuff and I just don't get it. Um, it takes me a while to get stuff. So I still haven't got it. Doesn't show any video. Doesn't even show me the video you sent before. That's weird. You sent me that smoking video, and that's not even up here anymore. And it doesn't say you deleted it, so that's really weird. Uh, so if you could send again, and and that that video will be, we'll show the video, we'll discuss it for about a minute, and that's going to be the end of the show. Thank you so much, uh, um, SK, for making this a great show. And while we're waiting for that video from SK, let's let's do a recap. So we talked about. How to say good night to sleep apnea. And the six ways to do that is to use um, some type of oral, 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 uh, oral device like a mandibular advance, advancement device or a tongue stabilizing device. Number five, avoid alcohol and smoking. Just avoid alcohol and smoking altogether, guys. Number four, use a humidifier with lavender, peppermint, or eucalyptus. Don't use peppermint if you're going to sleep, guys. Uh, I hear that's very bad. So I know the doctor said use peppermint, but he might not know that peppermint kind of picks you up rather than helps you to fall asleep. Use lavender, uh, eucalyptus, and you could also use um, cedar oil as well. If you ever noticed um, back in the olden days, again, in the 1700s, right, that we're talking about when we were run by kings and queens, people would make chests of cedar wood and put the chest at the foot of the bed. It was most of the time. And that cedar wood would help you to sleep. That's that's one reason. The chest was to put all the, you know, all the blankets into is what I normally see in the wood. You could use it for other things, but you you put it in the blank, you put blankets in there and you get your blankets out. But the cedar wood smelled so good that it, it actually helped to put you to sleep. So that's why you might see a cedar chest in someone's room. Okay, so peppermint. Uh, and number three, uh, don't uh, alter your sleep position. Don't sleep on your back, sleep on your side. Number two, do yoga. Told you guys, do yoga. And number one, brought to you by the bullyexposed.com and the Traveling Tech Teacher Maintain Healthy Weight. By just eating right. And I personally told you guys that ginger and ginger and or um, turmeric three times a day before a meal will help you to bring down your weight. Um, uh, let's see. SK says, do you use brown cinnamon sugar? No, I don't. I don't ever. I've never had that. Uh, before. Um, so that's what we talked about today. 
And again, for those of you that know, sleep apnea is when your, your breathing stops and starts while you sleep, okay? It's very, it's very serious. It's very important to help get rid of that. So do what you can do. All right, here we go. I'm going to just show you, you guys the audio. Oh, we still have the show going on. Sorry about that. We still have the Joe, I mean, the uh, Evan Roberts show going on. So let's see. You're going to get me in trouble, SK, with all that cursing. <laughs> it really makes me laugh when people are calling someone else um, obese when they're obese as well. Obviously, you could tell that guy was uneducated um, and didn't know how to express himself properly. Or he could have been educated just at that moment. He didn't know how to express himself properly. Okay, I will resubmit, he says. Okay, and he did that. I recorded that. <laughs> That's it's it's crazy. It's crazy and it's a shame. It's a shame. Uh that people act like that. But uh what can you do? You know, you just gotta you know, like that girl was like, I'm I'm here to help you. Uh you know what? Just don't help him. Forget about forget about him. That's the way I look at it. You know, that's the way I am. I go to help somebody and they give me an attitude, I'm done, I'm out of here. Nope, I'm out. Nope. You're not gonna disrespect me when I'm trying to help you. You can you can drown now for all I care. And let them drown in their own stupidity. That's the way I look at it. So I wanna thank SK so much. Uh thank Martin for stopping by. Thank you, Martin. Uh Danielle the Bella, thank you for stopping by. Who else, who else stopped by today? Let's see. Brand028 stopped by. Thank you, Brand. Smash that heart. Guys, whether you're watching this live or recorded, thanks for smashing. SK, uh, we want to remind you of the cbc.gov slash tips, okay, for tips of how to quit smoking, how not to get into smoking, which you shouldn't do. Hey, Haven134, thanks for stopping by. Who else we had stopped by? We had Barbie. Barbie the day the day in, uh stopped by thank you for stopping by we had oh real young blue the creator of this song stop by thank you uh young blue for stopping by we appreciate it again guys please share this okay share this sk share this with your dad in a couple of months i'm gonna do i'm gonna talk about it and we're gonna update we're gonna see how your dad's doing so uh please Start to record. The, tell your dad that he want to be part of this this show by allowing you to record, uh, not record with a video, just record with notes. Uh, unless your dad's okay with video, um, record things that are going on. I want to see uh, what happens and remind him that he that he could um, that a little ginger and a little turmeric before meals three times a day. It's going to help you reset your body, and you're not going to want to eat any of that. You know, I don't know your dad, but my guess, it, it, you know, if he's a little heavy set, my guess is that he's not eating the right things in there. Stay, you know, when we're young, I'm sure your dad, when he was young, he was built, he was nice. But as we get older, our body can't break down the things that we eat, and we have to learn to change our diet. Our diet. When I was young, I could eat whatever I want, man. Eat a half a pizza from Raymond's in, in Manhattan, from Gloria's in, in Flushing, Queens. You should just gobble up pizza all day long. Not, you know, almost everything. I just ate. I didn't worry. Cake, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Then at a certain time, I found that I had to pay attention. You know, I think I was probably 32. I was 188 pounds. A friend of mine brought it my, to my attention. Thank you for doing that, my friend. Brought up to my attention. Hey, you're looking a little big. I got on the scale. I was 188. And I didn't know. And then I started changing the way 
I I always watched, don't get me wrong, I always was a person that watched the way I eat because my mother uh, raised me that way. Uh, I can remember my mother never used to have sweet cereals like Frosted Flakes, right guys? Uh, sugar Smacks, all that kind of stuff. That wasn't allowed in my house. Soda was not allowed in my house. Uh, it's really funny because I always tell this, this story to my friends. The only time that we had soda in the house, guys, is when we had guests coming over. So my mom would buy soda for guests, but we never buy soda for us. And that was really funny, because if I get up in the morning and I wake up and I see soda in the refrigerator, I, first thing I would ask my mom is, who's coming over? And she would say, you know, your cousins are coming over, or your uncle, or one of your dad's friends, whatever it may be. So there was no soda allowed in the house. So, you know, if you're looking to curb what you eat and deal with your sleep and uh, ap apnea, get that soda out of the house, get, get the chips out of the house, for me it's the chips, get the whole holes out of the house, stop eating at fast food restaurants, guys, make your own food, even if, you know, there's some people I know, they can't even boil water, I'm going to say this real quick, they can't boil water, learn to cook, sit down with a friend that's a good cook and learn some tricks from them and learn how to cook and make your own feel food. Believe me, you will be so much happier. So Live Feed is brought to you by TheBullyExposed.com, a 501c3 nonprofit organization that reminds you to check out their YouTube channel at Nonfiction Filmmaker. Smash the um, subscribe button, smash the bell so you're notified when this show will appear up there. And brought to you by Traveling Tech Teacher. School's almost here, guys. You better check out TravelingTechTeacher.com. Better check it out. Don't want to be left out, especially if you're homeschooled. And teachers, uh, there's a lot of teachers that follow my page too. Check out Traveling Tech Teacher for um, all your school resources, all right? And that's going to do it for me. Remember, what is it? Anyone can wear the crown, right? Anyone can be a hero. Be kind to yourself and have a great day. Bye, SK. Bye, everyone. Bye.